Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel all about VLSI. In this video, we are going to start with new protocol that is AXI protocol. In our previous sessions, we have discussed about AMBA AHB protocol and ABB protocol. Those and all we have completed. Now we are going to start with this protocol which is known as AXI protocol. Now, what do you mean by AXI? The abbreviation of AXI is nothing but Advanced Extensible Bus Interface Protocol and this particular protocol is a part of AMBA Advanced Microcontroller Bus Architecture and this specification is developed by ARM. And this is a very high performance, high frequency bus protocol designed for communication between master and slave components in an SOC such as processor, memory, peripherals and custom IPs. For example, let's say if we have or you can say a simple FPGA board where we are going where we want to communicate our processor with our custom IP which we have designed using Verilog and this particular communication let's say if uh, if someone embedded system guy is writing some code and he want to access this IP and he want to write some driver which is going to drive the values from processor to IP then he is going to and then this particular processor and IP are basically connected with AXI interface. So this is where we can use this AXI interface for making this type of communication or for establishing these communications. Now XA protocol provides a standard way for IP blocks to communicate ensuring high bandwidth, low latency and independent read or write transfers. Let's see the evolution of our AMBA protocols. AMBA protocol version 1 uh, the protocol name is ASB or APB and it is in year 1996. It is a the features of that particular protocol is simple microcontroller interface and coming to AMBA 2 it is AHB or APB and it is developed in 1999. It is pipelined high performance bus. AHB protocol is a pipeline protocol. What do you mean by pipeline? This and all things we have learned in our AHB protocol. And in year 2003 the version AMBA 3 we, we got and that is nothing but AXI3 it, it has basically separate read or write channel and burst and we have AMBA4 which is in 2010 where it is AXI4, uh, AXI4 Lite, AXI4 Stream it basically enhance it is going to have enhanced performance streaming support etc and in number 5 that is CHI coherent hub interface and it is in 2013 plus and it supports cache coherency for multiple core resources. So these are the versions of AMBA protocols. Now we are going to learn about this AXI3 protocol which we are going to learn. Now in AXI also we have different types. One is AXI4 which is basically memory mapped transaction. It supports burst up to 256 bits and we have another thing which is known as AXI4 Lite. It is simplified low throughput control interface and no burst support single transfer only. And in AXI4 stream, we basically it is supports the purpose of it is basically for high speed data streaming and no address phase continuous data flow. So these are the different type of AXI interfaces which we are going to have. First of all, let us try to understand the architecture of AXI protocol, how the architecture of AXI protocol is and how what are the signals associated with AXI protocol and how the data is being transferred between the master and slave if we are going to use an AXI interface. The AXI protocol is a burst based protocol. AHB and AXI, these two are burst based protocols. What do you mean by burst? This and all things we have seen in our AHB protocol also. Now, basically a burst is nothing but sequence of data which are going to transfer at a time. During a edge of the clock, you are going to transfer a multiple data items or multiple control items. You are going to, you can send using this particular AHB protocol or AXI protocol and every transaction has address and control information on the address channel that describes the nature of the data to be transferred. For example, let's say if we are going to have a simple master and a slave which are connected via an AXI interface. If let's say the master wants to send the data to the slave, that is we are going to perform a write operation. In the case of your write operation, you are basically sending data from master to slip. Now, if you want to send any transaction, let's say a packet, we don't know the size of the packet, let's say it is of one byte or something. Okay, it's a packet. Now, this packet 
will have some type of information now in axa protocol and ahb protocol these are basically memory mapped protocols and here each transaction is going to have an address associated with that particular packet now if we want to send a single packet then there will be an address which will be associated with this packet let's say the address associated with this packet is a1 now you cannot simply send any packet as it is you should also wrap the address associated with that particular packet okay and the control information also you should wrap it with the packet and you should send for the for example for this the control information is right the right signal will be equal to one that means you are basically writing the data or it may be a burst signal okay those are all control signals which are associated with packet and those signals will also be sent with our packet okay this basically helps us to maintain the synchronization between the master and slave okay what are the control signals and what are all those things if you haven't watched the ahb protocol no worries we are going we are also going to learn them in our axa protocol also. so the axa protocol is a burst based protocol and every transaction has address and control information on the address channel that is going to describe the nature of the data to be transferred as i have sh shown you previously now the data transferred between the master and slave using a write data channel to the slave or a read data channel to the master in basically in our axa protocol we are going to have five channels one is read address channel one is read address channel let me change the color one is read address channel and another is read data channel and the third channel we are going to have in axa protocol is write address channel write data channel and write response channel these are the five channels we are going to have in axi protocol and using this five channels our master interface and slave interface are going to communicate with each other now let us try to understand one by one channel in more detail we have the very first channel that is nothing but our read address channel using this read address channel master is going to send the master is going to send the address and control information to the slave for example in a read operation let us try to uh, let us take a read operation in the in a case of read operation our ma our master wants to read some data from the slave let's say this is our master and this is our slave the master wants to read the data from the slave now how the master will ask the slave uh, send me the data it cannot ask like that right so it should use some interface signals to communicate with the slave and to ask the slave first uh, first sending the data to the master now first of all master what it is going to do is it is going to send the address uh, so that it can actually select a slave if we are going to have multiple slaves or it is also going to tell the master it is also going to tell the slave like from which address location it wants to read the data that particular address which is associated to that data will be sent by the master to the slave and also the control information like uh, h write signal whether it is a write operation or read operation in this case write is equal to zero that means the master wants to read the data from the slave so the master is going to send this write signal as a control signal to the slave so that the slave will come to know that okay the master wants to read the data and the slave will uh in response it is going to provide the data but here in this channel using this address and control uh, channel the master is only going to send the address information and the control information like your h write like your write information or like the size of your data or the type of burst it want to perform like that information it is going to send to them slave using uh, the master is going to send to the slave using this address and control channel now next after receiving those particular information from the master like address and control information the slave will understand it and the slave in response it needs to send the data to the master how it is going to send the data it is not going to send the data using the same address and control channel we have an another dedicated channel which is known as read data channel using this dedicated channel for the data the slave is going to send in response to the address and control information the slave is going to send that particular read data to the master using this channel which is known as read data channel so in this channel the the slave is going to send to the master and master is going to receive that particular data 
Now, after master going to receive the data, let's say if the master wants to perform any write operation, or let's say the master wants to uh, provide any uh, response to the slave. How it is going to provide the response to the slave? It is going to use this write response channel for providing the response to the slave. Okay, if it if the master is uh, performing a read operation, the master after receiving the data from the slave. the master should provide a response okay how it is going to provide a response it is going it can use this channel which is known as write response channel now let's say if our master wants to perform a write operation in this particular case our write the data will be transferred from master to slave now for performing write operation also the master it cannot send the data as it is it cannot send the data as it is now first of all master should provide the valid address and control information the address as i have told you previously that every transaction is going to have a associated address for example if we are sending a packet we cannot send it as it is we should always associate a address for that particular packet and we are also going to tell the slave what kind of burst we are going to follow like 4 bit or 8 bit or 16 bit if you have watched the ahb protocol you might have understand what i am talking about but if you haven't watched that okay no problem we are going to discuss in our further sessions okay and the master is also going to tell the size of the packet and width of the and uh, what type of operation it is going to perform in order or out of order those are all things all the control information it is going to give it to the slave after slave receiving the type of address and control information it will get ready for receiving those particular data items from the master since it is a write operation now the master after sending all the address and control informations to the slave the master is going to use another channel which is known as write data channel using this write data channel the master is going to provide the data to the slave using this write data channel it is going to provide the data to the slave and in response to that particular data which was received by our slave it is going to give the response using this write response channel and slave is going to provide the response to the slave so this is how your master and slave are going to communicate with each other using our five different channels so very first channel which we are going to have is read address channel and the second type of channel which we are going to have is read data channel the read address channel is used for performing read type of operations where the master wants to read the data so those particular informations the address and control informations which are required for our reading the data from the slave will be given in the read data read address channel not in the write address channel so we have for the address we have two different channels one is read address channel and another is write address channel but if you observe in ahb protocol and apb protocol we don't have dedicated channels for the address only using one address channel we were sending the write address information as well as the read address information but in axa protocol for increasing the speed of the transfer we are going to use two different channels one is write address channel and another is read address channel now in the case of read operation if the master wants to read the data from the slave then the master is going to use the channel which is known as read data channel for reading the data and if we and if it wants to write the data to the slave then it is going to use the channel which is known as write data channel and and in response to that it is going to uh, get the response from the slave using the write response channel so that is what it is written here so the data is transferred between the master and slave using a write data channel to the slave or a read data channel to the master and in write transactions in which all the data flows from the master to the slave and the axa protocol has an additional write response channel to the allow the signal to signal uh, to the master to completion of the write transaction that is what we have discussed now okay and the axa protocol enables address information to be issued ahead of actual data transfer supports for multiple outstanding transactions supports for out of order completion transactions these are all the features that we are going to learn in our further sessions now let us try to understand the very important point that is now here in amba axa protocol multiple transactions can be outstanding at the same time let us try to understand what do you mean by outstanding that is the master can issue several read or write request before previous one finishes so every transaction is tagged with an id allowing responses to be matched with correct request for example so let us try to understand what do you mean by outstanding transaction in ahb protocol let us take our ahb protocol where we are going to have a master and a slave like this and let's say 
we need to send four transactions in transaction one we are going to send one packet and in transaction two we are going to send another packet and in transaction three we are going to send third packet and in transaction four we are going to send the fourth packet and it is not a burst it is different transactions so this transaction will take two cycles in ehb protocol i am talking about ehb protocol now for sending this for completion of this transaction it is going to take two cycles after completing this transaction we are the master is going to move to the second transaction and this transaction is also going to take two cycles one cycle is for passing the address and control information and another cycle is needed for writing or reading the data okay and the third cycle is also going to contain two cycles and the fourth fourth transaction is going to also going to contain two cycles and here after completing one transaction then only master is going to initiate the second transaction after that only it is going to initiate the next transaction and so on but in axa protocol we have something known as out of order or outstanding transactions so at the same time the master can issue several write or read request before previous one is going to finish in hp protocol what was happening after transaction one completes only the master is going to provide the write or read address control information of your transaction two. but here in the case of axa protocol it can start to issue multiple transaction control informations at the same time so this is nothing but your out of outstanding uh, transactions and what do you mean by in order transactions so basically in order transactions the response is written in the same order as the requests were issued for a given id so this means the slave must send back the data or responses in the same sequence they were received let's say if we want to if we want to perform a read transaction one the id associated with this is id 0 and for read transaction two we have an id 0 so both belongs to the same id now this is what i am talking about this is my master and this is my slave so the master wants to read the data from the slave so before that it should pass the control information which is associated with the read transaction one and there will be an id which is asso associated with that and it wants to read one more transaction read transaction two and the id associated with is also the same now first the information related to read transaction one has been passed and then next the read information or the information which is associated with the second transaction has been passed next after read transaction one so the slave must also respond to the master in the same order the master is requesting from it this is nothing but in order transaction it is nothing but in order transaction now we have something known as out of order transaction so in the case of out of order transaction the responses can written in any order as long as the id helps the master identify which response belong to which request for example in this example only if our master is requesting two read transfers this is read transfer one with an id is equal to one and another is read transfer two with an id is equal to two so first it is requesting the read transfer of a packet with an associated id is equal to one and it is next requesting a read transfer two with an id associated with two after read transaction one it has passed the control and uh, control information and address information of read transaction two but the slave can respond in any order not in the order which was specified by the master that means it can provide the data which is associated with the read transaction two then next it can provide the data which was associated with the read address one or the read transaction one okay this is nothing but our out of order transaction and in order transaction so that's about this introduction to axa protocol and in our next session we are going to start with our basic transactions like how your master and slave are going to communicate with each other what are the handshake signals which are required for establishing these connections yes so that's all about this particular video if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel all about vlsi and and please provide your valuable feedback so that we can improve ourselves and improve our content and thank you for watching this video